world, to Singapore with Finmechanica, Washington DC with the World Bank, Luxembourg with the European Investment Bank, Rome with the Group of Erie and Boston, London, Santiago and Lima for the Mac Group, and Hong Kong and Shanghai with Mandarin Capital Partners. Alberto holds an MBA with honors from Harvard, Harvard Business School and a BA cum laude in economics from the University of Bologna. And he'll be sharing his views with us on the China's development economic model at the end of it or what's coming after. Thank you. <laughs> Professor, I'm going to have to throw away my speech now. <laughs> <laughs> You kill me. Okay. Now you're telling me the consumption is 60, 65 percent. Yeah. It's like the United States. <laughs> huh? No, no, no. No, in the no, United no. it was 72, went down to 67. Oh, no, 67, including government consumption. Ah, yeah. Pinocchio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? No, you're better. <laughs> no, no, I just. Also, it's like 50 percent. No, no, yeah. I cannot, actually, no, I really thank very much Professor Ju because he opened my eyes. Because uh, I sort of, first of all, I have to figure out. You know, uh, because uh, I knew that consumption figures, uh, generally people say consumption rate in China are 35%. We all knew it's not 35%. There, there was something in there. So it was very, this is the first time I, I see it done systematically, and I really thank, thank you very you. much, and stupid, I didn't think of that thing about the, the high income, all the, also all the black money, all the non-reported money, obviously, I'm Italian, how to not, to not <laughs> I, think, I, I just, I can't believe, anyway, yeah, you beat me in my own game, huh? <laughs> um, so, yes, um, actually, I'm no academic, and, uh, uh, I, we, do, we, we do investment, we, we live by investing money and getting return from our investment. So we really don't care very much whether consumption is high or is low or, uh, you know, we do worry about where to put our money and uh, we do worry and since uh, we are in private equity, we have to invest, and every time we have to invest, we have to worry how are we going to exit in four to five years. The average uh, length of time you hold an investment is four years, 0.3. So every time I invest, I have to worry what's going to be the environment, the situation like in four and something years. So, and uh, the conclusion I reached. It's not that consumption is okay, but the conclusion I reached is the investment is too much. Professor, here we've got a problem. <laughs> we have to sort this out, okay? Um, and generally, you know, I, I, there is a widespread, a widespread agreement that, uh, that uh, China should rebalance consumption investment. I mean, in general terms, I don't want to say whether it's going to be 3%, 5% or whatever, but but uh, general, there is an overall agreement that there should be some, uh, some rebalancing. I mean, this is the only country in the world where you can see a market going 20% and still see margin pressure. Because in, like, in overall like business theory, market growing, there is a uh, capacity is not keeping up, so margins are good. In China, it's not true. You can see a market growing 20 25%, and investment is growing 40%. You have squeezing of margins. Why? Because investment is generally a little excessive. Now, shipbuilding over capacity, uh, wind turbines over capacity, solar panel over capacity. Steel, over capacity. Aluminium, over capacity. Glass, over capacity. Cement, over capacity. If you have seen the, the new figure on the supermarket, retail profitability, they are quite available, of listed supermarkets in Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, all being squeezed. 
I mean, profitability is, is down because consumption flexed a little bit and they build too much. So I don't want to, so basically I don't fly with you on the consumption up angle, but I come the other way around. I think whatever it is, I think investment is too much, okay? For some reason. So I hope we can find some way to, very humble professor, I mean, I just you know, <laughs> always, you know. Um, no, so I see the agreement is there. At times I have my, my dear colleagues who translate even like um, the magazines from uh, the Central Committee. They have a special magazine where like important uh, influential uh, politician write on it. And there is always this emphasis on increasing consumption, increasing consumption, and so on. There is. The emphasis is there. Okay? Um, <laughs> Now, there are other symptoms. For example, there is, um, I was not going to say this thing, but I have to because, because you forced me to. <laughs> there is definitely a, a, a decrease in overall return on investment in China. Return on investment is low. So, with a, with a country growing at 10% a year for the last 20 years, if LIs grow, it's not because demand is weak. It might be because supply is, is, uh, is going faster than, than demand. As a matter of fact, every year, every quarter, you read uh, consumption grow by 14 to 15% and investment goes up around 23 to 26%. So for as much as consumption growth, investment always grows a little bit faster. And I was not going to stress these points, because I was going to say, in general, there is no, we all think Chinese should invest a little less. Okay? Now, the question in, my, in, uh, in that, actually, I've been reading this ever since I came back to China. I came back in 2006, and this is nothing new. This debate about, you know, Lowering investment, increasing consumption has always been there, right? 1996. Yeah, eh? From 1996. Yeah, so it's always been there. And, uh, and uh, in some ways, I think, uh, Chinese politicians are resembling more and more European politicians, where they keep saying, we'll do something, and things don't happen. <laughs> so they're thinking of bad disease. I was here in the 90s, it was a good thing. You go to Beijing, they tell you the way to go, and that was great to get like one thing. Now, now here they talk, 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 and things quite don't happen because whatever the, the benchmark consumption on GDP is not, is not the 35%, which is the official one, but still hasn't moved. Actually, it's been declining over the last uh, few years. And I also think the Singapore example uh, is an offense to China. Singapore is 5 million. It's less than a suburb of Shanghai. I mean, you can't compare yourself to Singapore, professor. And also, <laughs> I would never do that. <laughs> and also, remember that Singapore is in a state of incredible demographic growth, and there is it will declare property bubble. So you really don't want to compare China to Singapore. In any case, <laughs> now the question is how do you rebalance? This is something I never could figure out. I mean, there is always this talk about rebalancing. How the hell do you rebalance? One way, one obvious way, I never see, I've seen a lot of people making point, making diagnosis, never seen therapies. Or maybe, maybe they are written in Chinese, I don't get to them. <laughs> but in the English word, I've never seen a good plan on how you rebalance. The first obvious way to rebalance is increase salaries. This actually is happening in China. You know, cost of labor is going up. Now the cost of labor in China is high as Mexico. China is no longer a country for offshoring. Finished. People don't. So this is, and 
definitely the government has not has not discouraged the salary increase. But you know there is a limit to which you can go. You cannot go too fast, otherwise you start you start losing whole industries, or you squeeze the margins too much, which is what is happening. Ah, because there is another problem I have to touch, which is the the increasing gap between the, the rate of growth in GDP and and uh, and the rate of decline in the stock market. That should tell us something. How come this the Shanghai market is the worst performing market in, in the world over the last four years, while the Chinese economy the best economy in the world? There is a mismatch, and I think there are many reasons. But one of the reasons is this oversupply. Uh, another good point, another thing that people say is the SOEs are making way too much money and they don't pay dividends. So what they do with all this, this retain earnings is that they, they invest in sector that are strategic. As a matter of fact, you, you, you look at all the SOEs, all the big Chinese companies, they're tremendously diversified. They're piles of cash, they get more and they get in the real estate, they get into leasing, you get pharmaceutical company, they end up in cement, they end up in retailing, very not tremendously focused. And this is definitely an issue. But the sole question is how do you get dividends out of SOEs is a big issue. Because I mean this is not this is not just Chinese SOEs. Because I worked in Italian SOEs for several years. I mean, SOE managers hate to pay dividends, <laughs> okay? Because the money you keep, money is power, money is growth, money, you play with money, it's your life. I mean, I'm saying in good terms. You do things with money. You don't like to give it back to the treasury. It's nothing to do with psychological. Nobody does. Uh, then the third big issue about, you know, how you rebalance this investment and consumption is welfare. You have to create a welfare system, you have to give people pension, you have to give them medical insurance. Obviously, to develop, first of all, the Chinese are looking with great astonishment what's happening in the European welfare countries, where an excess of welfare has created, has created a decline in societies, where people are losing incentive to work, or are losing the definition of work. Okay? So they, they, they're very cautious about, you know, yes, welfare, but to what extent? And also providing welfare to 1.5, 1.4 billion people is not the same thing than providing welfare to 10 million people. It's very, very different. So it's obviously that's going to take some time. It's going to be a long, a long trip. And uh, we can't expect China to go too fast. Now, another thing when we consider this whole question about is the investment, the, the, the title is, is the investment model coming to an end? Uh, I think we all agree that it should come to an end. It should, it should probably grow less, okay? Uh, the question is how, when, how do, and how do we get this, this done? And in the case of China, there is another, another feature you have to consider. There is not a single uh, reference. There is not a single historical reference. You cannot say, oh, because Korea, no, oh, because Taiwan. I mean, <laughs> those are like peanut countries. <laughs> but do it in China with diversity in income, the geographical diversity. So, you know, it's a big issue. So it makes a tremendous amount of difference how you do things. I mean, nobody has ever done an exercise like this. No Chinese can go back to a text and says, let me see how it, how it is done, this process. Because everything is to be invented. And some of what has been invented actually didn't quite work too well. And I'm talking about the whole welfare system. Because all the Western world is suffocated by welfare. I'm talking also about the U USA with Medicaid and Medicare. That's the talk of the day. So that's something that China government is very hes hesitant to recognize. In any case, the question, the rebalancing question, uh, 
is a very political question. It's, it's not just simple economics. That's actually taking a big chunk of GDP, chunk of GDP. I don't know whether it is 30 or it is 5. But even if it is 5 or it is 10, it's a lot of money. Taking away from the hands of few and give it to many. This is politics. This is not economics. How, how you take away from few and give it to many is generally done. I mean, no, in my country, nothing gets done. So it's, uh, <laughs> but like, I'm trying to think of a country like the UK with Margaret Thatcher. You went left and right, left and right, you know. High, you know the debate in the States, Democrat, higher taxes, lower expenditure, or the whole tax and expenditure equation. Actually, in China it's complicated because uh, the debate is not so open, so we can't, we don't know much, but the process is tremendously political because there are, you know, the people who spend the money, the SOE managers, there's powerful lobby. Uh, private business owners don't like to pay higher taxes because one way to get from, to decrease the rate of investment is to increase corporate taxes. You know, they really don't like that, and they do everything not to pay them. Uh, the powerful uh, investment chief in the provincial bureau don't like to have their budget cut. They do anything not to have their budget cut. It's a big, uh, so it's quite political. And definitely, I think the, the new leadership didn't quite have the mandate from the, from to take away from few and give it to many. The sole issue about, they have to thread the sub line between continuity and reform. One day is reform, one day is continuity. So this is why many times you don't get the clear statement about what is going to happen. We're all trying to understand what is the new leadership going to do, and they don't say. My theory, the reason they don't say is that also they don't know how far they can push. So before they say something is not going to happen, they have to figure out what they can actually do before they lose things. So in the end, I think uh, my question is how much can be done proactively and how much can, can be done reactively. I think uh, there is how much you can plan to do and how much you actually do because you have to. You have a, a so-called landing, semi-hard, that gives an excuse to do it. You have, uh, you have some external shock that, that force you to do it, whatever. But, uh, but uh, you might have, I tend to see that it's very difficult to do things, becoming also in China, very difficult to do things proactively, uh, but things tend to get done reactively, adapting, in an adaptive way, very fast. And this, this is, I think, how it's going to happen. The rebalance is not going to be on a continuum, but it's going to be on big step, adapting also to external shocks. The other question is, is it going to be a hard or a soft rebalancing? Because, you know, you heard you hear about this hard landing, soft landing, hard landing, soft landing. I don't know what it's going to do. But this, this is, we have to wonder, okay? Uh, other question is when? I'm sure that on the long term, China will, China economy will take on a structure which is very similar to most other countries. Already the import export balance is, you know, already the highest exporter country in the world is not China anymore, it's Germany. In, what I mean is export minus import is a percentage of GDP. In China it simply is less than 3%. Um, the other thing is, do we need maybe some political reform to do it? No, this is everybody saying because another big thing is we need to get the, the, the service sector to grow. 
Because people don't just consume cars and furniture. You know, people do massage, buy movies, uh, you know, use credit cards, and, and growth in consumption is generally, at the single level, is accompanied by a growth in the service sector. But the two service sectors that really, really count is not hairdressing. It's not massage, there are two, <laughs> media and financial services. So if you really want to have a substantial growth in services, you've got to open the financial services more and the media sector more. But this ain't easy because in this country still there is a limit on imports of 40 movies, how many, 24 a year. So, you know, people I'm sure would even consume more if the, if the the offer was higher in some, in some way. Um, I think, uh, as a matter of fact, all, I said no comparison can be done, but we can do it. For example, I never compare China with Singapore, but I do compare with Korea. Uh, I look at Taiwan a lot, and in both those countries, both Korea and Taiwan, the increase in consumption and the lowering of the investment rate was accompanied by a relaxation of political control. So they started as a very top-down sort of country and they, they evolved into more bottom-up sort of countries. So this is also a question I have for you and I think enough of that. Professor, are we friends or enemies now? <laughs> <laughs> <Is> we <it> friends? <laughs>